What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, The Network. <laughs> Today's topic is section 3.30A, peer group or BGP peer group. This is a part of the section describe, configure, and verify BGP peer relationships and authentication. I don't think we, yeah, we did cover, uh, we covered authentication. No, we didn't. Anyways, this is a topic in the CCMP route exam, which will be now known as the, well, not now, in February, will be known as the CCMP Enterprise Exam. Let's take a look at the exam blueprint and see where we came from and where we are headed. Hashtag lab every day. I don't have my shirt on today, but nonetheless, we are labbing every day. This is the exam blueprint, implementing Cisco IP routing, exam code 300-101. Again, this will be called the CCMP Enterprise in the future. We just wrapped up the section. We just did a basic BGP uh, peer relationship on uh, using Boston NetSim in the last video. Today, we're going to cover peer groups, which is a function of a BGP, uh, configuring BGP routers. And after that, we're going to cover active and passive. So what is a BGP peer group? A BGP peer group, well, you know what BGP is, right? It's a routing protocol, border gateway protocol. It is the main routing protocol that we use on the internet, pretty much the only routing protocol. When we are configuring routers to be part of an autonomous system, right? We can have like a whole bunch of routers, right? But let's say we have like a whole set of rules that we need to apply, right? Instead of making all of these rules for each, let's say we had like a hundred routers in our autonomous system, we would have to put all of those rules in each and every single, unless you know our automation or some kind of programming language, you'd have to go to the CLI for every these every one of these routers and apply these rules. Well, peer group kind of uh, minimizes this legwork for you by just creating a whole bunch of rules on one router, right? You add these rules to a what's called a peer group, and then whoever, what other other routers, whatever other routers you want to add or have apply these rules to, you add them to the peer group. Let's go ahead and take a look at these slides for the official definition. What is a peer group? So I don't know if you guys are familiar with group policies, but if you're like, you know, in system administration or Microsoft, uh, you know, Active Directory, yeah, that sort of thing, it's similar to group policies. But if not, official definition, a BGP peer group is a group of BGP neighbors that share the same update policies. Update policies are usually set by route maps, distribution lists, filter lists. So you, the list goes on and on. List, 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 list. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can add, but if you have to make all of these rules and put them on a whole bunch of routers manually, it's, it's obviously it's a lot of labor. So instead of defining the same policies for each individual neighbor, you define a peer group name and assign policies to the peer group. So if you look at this topology right here, we create all of the rules or router one, right? Then we create the peer group. And I'll show you the configuration in a bit. We're gonna fire up GNS3 and do that. And then you create the peer group, right? Then whatever router you wanna add, apply these rules to, you just add them to that peer group. So let's say we wanna put router two in that group. We put it in, we put it in the group, three, four, so on and so forth. We had like 500 routers here and we need to apply all those rules to it. You just create a peer group and then just let them know that they are part of that peer group. You obviously have to go on the other router still to make them neighbors, but as but as far as the peer grouping goes and all the rules, you don't have to do that manually. Here's a written example. Um, obviously, we're familiar with the network statements, right? We're familiar with turning on BGP or activating BGP. Now, here's the uh, here's where the configuration starts, right? We say neighbor, and then we name the peer group. In this case, this is route PG. And then you say it's a peer group. So you're going to say neighbor, peer group, name the PG, and then or name the peer group, and then say peer group, right? Then after that, this this other stuff right here is other rules. Like these are prefix lists. If you don't know what that is, I created a video on that. Just it's way back in the CCMP playlist. We did this a couple couple months ago, actually. But anyways, there's a whole bunch of peer um, prefix lists that we want to apply to these other routers. Instead of putting every one of these commands in each one of these routers, we just define the neighbor, right? We're saying this is the neighbor. He's in the remote AS 6702. That's this guy, right? This is from the vantage point of the headquarters router. Then we're gonna say neighbor, that same neighbor, he's a part of the peer group called route PG. Once we do that, it's gonna apply these prefix lists. And then uh, I forgot to put in here, the way we can verify that is just show IP BGP peer groups. So you do that and we'll run that command and then you can see who's a part of that peer group and who's gonna have these rules applied. We're not gonna get too in depth with adding a whole bunch of rules. We're just gonna create the peer group and add routers to them 
we're not going to get because there's so many things you can get really creative on, you know, what kind of rules you want to apply to them. But the, 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 the basic concept here is creating the, the peer group and adding rousers to them. Don't worry about the rules because we, we, we've discussed the other type of rules like prefix lists and distribution groups in other videos. So plus the topology or the uh, lab that we're going to be working with doesn't call for it. So you want to know more about the other stuff? Go through my CCMP playlist. Y'all know what it is when y'all see this little girl. Let's go fire GNS3, get our hands dirty with BGP peer groups. All right. So here's the lab we're going to be working with today. Again, I got this topology from gns3vault.com. Shout out to Rene Molnar for that website. He's got a whole bunch of labs and topologies that you can study or uh, download from his site and uh, get into this stuff. But anyways, let's go ahead and read these uh, steps here. It says your autonomous system has a lot of IBGP routers, right? This is really applicable to internal BGP because if you have an external BGP, right, they're obviously in different ASs. Well, I guess you could do that too because I showed you on that in the last example. I'm ranting here. If you're, you are already familiar with route reflectors, we're not because we haven't covered that yet, which saves you a lot of trouble configuring all of the IBGP neighbor pairings. You just read about BGP peer groups, which sounds interesting. Less CPU overhead. That's another thing too. There's you know less work on your part and less work on the CPU's part. Let's see if this will work. The goal here is, okay, so all IP addresses have been pre-configured by me. I've downloaded it and didn't have it. We're going to configure a peer group called peers on router bit. Here's bit right here. And then on routers byte, octet, and nibble, they should only form IBGP pairings with router bit. So this guy's going to appear. These two are going to appear. Those two are going to appear. Those two are going to appear. They're not going to appear with each other. We're just going to have them appear with this guy right here. Ensure you have full connectivity with an AS1234. So let's go ahead and fire these bad boys up. Console in a bit. Y'all know what these are, right? These are basically the uh, the uh, units of measurement when it comes to uh, computing. Bits, bytes, octets, and nibbles. I think I remember the, telling y'all this in several videos back. Not very many people know about a nibble unless you're like, really into that stuff. Anyway, uh, so right now we're logged into router bit. Y'all want to say hi to Shelby? Shelby be getting on my nerves sometimes. That's my girlfriend's dog. All right, <laughs> we're logged on now. Uh, so let's take a look at the uh, interfaces here. Let, let, let's, let's look at the topology just to make it a little easier. All right, so bit has a, a network, the 12 network, the 13 network, and a 12 network here, right? Dot one, dot two, three, and four, right here. Uh, let's start off with creating the BGP peerings. I might have to, uh, I might edit this part out because this is just simple stuff right here. So we're going to go into global config mode, router, BGP. We said the AS number is one, two, three, four, right? And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the, the peer groups, right? So he said the, the peer group is going to be named what? Peers, right? We said it was going to be called peers right here. So let's go back in a bit and say neighbor. And we're going to say peers. This is case sensitive. And then we are going to say uh, peer group. Notice there it is right there. Peer group. Configure peer group. So we say neighbor. Give the name of the neighbor. And then say uh, peer group. Peer group. So that's the peer group. Let's see what we created so far, right? Show IP BGP peer group. And notice we created the peer group, but there's nobody in it, no member. So we're going to have to do that, right? Let's go ahead and make byte a neighbor. I mean, a uh, peer, a part of the peer group, right? We should have done, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's do that. And then we'll do the BGP peerings. Uh, so we're going to make byte a part of that peer group. We're going to go back in the global config mode. We're going to say neighbor, my bad. We got to go to a router config mode, BGP, one, two, three, four. I'm kind of being scatterbrained here with uh, how I'm setting this up, but I just learned from my girlfriend that I'm scatterbrained. So that's one uh, mental thing I got to work on. Neighbor, the neighbor is this guy, right? 12.2, neighbor 192.168.12.2. And we're going to say he's part of the peer group. What's the name of the peer group? Peers. Remember I said it was case sensitive, right? Well, let's watch what happens if I just uh, misspell it even. Peers like that, right? It says here, configure the peer group first, right? 
Well, we didn't create one called peers spelled like that. We did it with the correct spelling. So let's go ahead and fix that. Peers. And now it says here, specify remote AS. Oh, we didn't do that. We got to do the remote AS. So after that, peer group, specify remote AS. Also, we got to configure BGP first. Good to know. Good to know. So let's go back to bit and do that. We well, are in bit. <laughs> Uh, the neighbor is 168.12.2. We're going to say remote AS1234, right? Because they're all in the same AS. They're all in the same AS. So uh, let's do the same thing with the other guys. The neighbor is going to be, the other neighbor is actually 13.3. Uh, and the other one is 14. Dot four. Fourteen dot four. Right. The uh, okay. So we've specified the remote ASs. Now we can do the peer group def definition. So we're gonna say we were saying neighbor. The first neighbor was this guy, right? Byte. Neighbor one ninety two one sixty eight dot twelve dot two twelve dot two. And we're saying he's part of the peer group called peers. Like that. So now he's part of that peer group. Let's verify that, right? Do show IP BGP peers. My bad. P BGP peer group, rather. It's peer group. And notice we he is now a member of that peer group. Now we're not gonna create any rules or a whole bunch of definitions of stuff like that, prefix list or whatever. We're just adding them to the peer group so y'all know the basic concept of what a peer group is. Let's do the same thing for Octet and Nibble. Go back in the router config mode, BGP1234. My bad. 1234. Oh, good to know. You can only do 1AS per per uh, per router. It's not by interface. So neighbor, we're going to add the other two groups to this uh, peer group, right? Neighbor 192.168.13.3. He's a part of the peer group called peers, right? So we just added him to the peer group peers, right? We're gonna do the same thing with this guy, Nibble, and add him to the peer group. And then we're just gonna verify what we just did. And I uh, don't believe we're gonna create any rules. I mean, yeah, any kind of prefix lists or, or anything. Uh, we're not gonna to get too involved here. We're just creating the peer groups and move them right along. Peers, so now they're a part of that peer group. We can verify that again with show. Let's put it in its full context. Show IP BGP peer hyphen group and there they are these guys are part of that peer group so now once we create rules and stuff like that say uh this distribution list this access list this prefix list as long as we add them to that group they will add those they will um receive uh those rules now let's be complete here because they're not totally neighbors yet we add them to the group because remember if we do show ip bgp sum we haven't even activated BGP on those other routers. So we need to, we still need to define them as neighbors, define these guys as their neighbor, but all the other stuff that could be done manually. So I, I really don't see the big, unless you have a whole bunch of rules and a whole bunch of routers, then yes, this peer group uh, feature is very handy. So let's go into Byte, Octet and Nibble do the same thing and call it a day. Enable global config mode router bgp1234 right and we're going to say network no yeah neighbor and his neighbor was bit which was 12.1 right so 182.168.12.1 right this guy his neighbor is bit and bit is 192.168.12.1 right we're going to do the same thing on octet and we're going to do the same thing on these two as well we're going to say remote AS, same thing, because it's internal, one, two, three, four. That's it. We're going to do the same thing on Octet. Let's console into Octet and on console into Nibble. Do the same thing. So we're in Octet right now. Define him as a neighbor. While that's coming up, let's check our neighbors. Show IP BGB, show IP BGB sum. They are not neighbors yet. I think we're still waiting. There it is. Now he's up. And there it is. Four seconds he's been up. We got to do the same thing on these two guys. This is basic BGP stuff, but I'm showing y'all anyway. It's kind of a, not really a bonus. This is basics 
but global config mode router bgp one two three four neighbor his neighbor is one eight two dot one sixty eight dot twelve no thirteen dot one remote as is the same thing because it's internal and we're gonna do the same thing on nibble and bgp should come up again once more while that's going on we're gonna go in here global config mode router bgp one two three four neighbor is right his neighbor is that guy 192.168.14.1 right so 182.168.14.1 remote as his remote as is 1234 same thing they're all in the same as that's why if it was another as if this was they would be external bgp if we had another as in here then we put their remote as but this is internal bgp remote as 1234 you should see bgp came up again so we should have two neighbors at that point Yep, we have that guy's a neighbor. So we have this guy's a neighbor. And now we have this guy's a neighbor. As soon as we get that message, there it is. Now the other one's up, 14.4. And now we got three neighbors. Let's take a look at the peer groups one more time. BGP peer group. And there they go. That's the third neighbor. That's the second neighbor. Well, this is second. That's third. And that's the fourth neighbor. If we want to add more rules to it, we just got to do it on bit. And they will apply on Byte, Octet, and Nibble. That is all I got for y'all today. Thank you for watching. That is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. Please comment, like, subscribe to the network.